So welcome back to another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Bob Cole. So Bob, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, I'm the coordinator of digital education. I work for Howard County Public School System, which is located in Howard County, Maryland, which is in between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. Um, we are, you know, a relatively large system. We have about 59,000 students. Um, prior to working in Howard County, um, I started off as a high school science teacher and kind of became interested in, you know, supplementing some of my classroom stuff back when Blackboard was free. Uh, I had like, you know, that original teacher account in 1998 and, uh, you know, I would just post things for students to work on outside of class and just became more interested in, in, you know, I saw some of the extensions and working in science, we were, you know, doing computer modeling and other things like that. So it just kind of evolved, um, got into a master's program and then, and then um, took this awesome distance education class that wasn't, that was really teaching people how to migrate past the old correspondence course model. And then from that point on, um, I latched on to a program through the State Department of Ed, and I had a great mentor, um, Liz Gloa, and she um, helped launch the state virtual school program in Maryland. And so I worked with her, and then when she retired, um, led the state program for a few years. So I've been lucky, honestly, to, to have been from the classroom up through the state level to really see everything in between and, and now um, kind of really lucky to be back in the district and um, you know with all of the that background now really try to apply it in, in the day to day so okay. that, that's sort of how I've gotten to here. All right so you've been in both the brick and mortar and the online environment you've been a school leader now for a number of years so this particular school year we've had this major disruption that's happened that has uh, you know, where everyone had to sort of abruptly go online in this remote instruction model. So closing down in this school year and opening up the next school year are going to be a little bit different than what it's traditionally been. What advice would you give for school leaders on things they should be thinking about on that front? Yeah, I mean, I was actually really happy that a lot of the early um, discussions were continuing to focus on the student not necessarily about instruction per se, you know, how are students doing, checking in with families, you know, making sure they're doing okay. Um, I think in closing out this year, it's gonna be really interesting on how we find closure for students, especially, you know, because most students will not have, you know, will not reenter a school building. And so um, trying to figure out how to provide some closure, I think, are, something that we're trying to work through. Um, we're also trying to identify what's working, you know, and then how do we capitalize on that moving forward? So while we were, you know, unsure of how to scale um, the distance learning model for all of our teachers, um, you know, we found that, you know, we want to just continuously improve that process. So I think, again, to close out this year, we're trying to continually go back and find out, you know, what's been working well, where can we even continue to tweak the schedule even through the next few weeks of instruction? Because um, our, our school uh, is gonna be ending at the end of June. So we still have a few more weeks to continue working through that. Um, and then also just identifying, again, looking forward, um, what are things that we're doing that we can actually continue to scale? Um, what's been interesting about this whole experience is, um, you know, typically distance learning has been an opt-in and now everyone's been forced in. And so we're all, almost seeing the flip side as to where we're asking the question, is a student a, a good, quote unquote, good candidate for online learning? Now we're asking the opposite question about, you know, how are students who are used to the social interaction, they're, they're not doing well and, and how can we provide those experience, you know, how can we support those students to continue going through? And then I think the last thing is now we're just starting to see that first wave of, of online fatigue 
in our staff and students. And I think that's going to be a really important um, element for us to consider, you know, in closing out the years, what are things that we can be doing to support staff, not only to mentally recharge, but also just to, you know, they have never been online this long in their life. And so, um, you know, how do we keep the momentum up? Um, how do we keep it as, as, as it exciting, you know, in week 10 as it was in week one or two? Um, and so those are some of the things that I would, that I would encourage people to con continue to consider. Now, you, you mentioned the, the job that the teachers have done, and in many cases, it's amazing to see what they were able to accomplish in a, a very short time with very little planning and preparation and training. What can school leaders do over the next few months and early into next school year so that if something like this were to happen again from, say, a second wave or a local flare-up, that teachers would be in a better position to move to this a little more seamlessly? Yeah, I think one of the key things is that, you know, we were able to transition a little bit better because those relationships were already in place. And so there wasn't a real need. I mean, yes, there, there were some changes on how do you build rapport online within face to face, but these are relationships that had been established for, you know, several months. So I think going into the fall, we're going to be need to be really intentional about how we can start building those relationships early, um, even possibly before the school year begins, you know, should the school year not start um, face to face. Um, we've talked about different ideas of looping with students and even doing things like, you know, having um, a teacher move up with students into the next math level, even if it's not what they were currently looking at in their schedule. So just things where, we can really be intentional about um, establishing the relationships from day one and even before day one so that, um, you know, it's a little bit easier to transition. Um, I think another thing is really uh, working on continuing developing our material. Um, I know that there was a big push on, you know, moving how to, how to transition uh, faculty and, and, and staff online but we really do need to continue to circle back um, every few weeks to provide a little bit more support, a little bit more training, and a little bit more, again, that feedback loop about, you know, what worked with, with this, what didn't work, how can we continue to adjust the schedule? You know, we started off with two check-ins per week. Was that enough? Do we need to provide more, fewer? And, you know, also listening to and getting that feedback from our students and our students actually have been really, um, it's been interesting to hear, you know, good and bad um, from their perspective, uh, you know, what seemed to have worked with them. And they've really pointed out some things that, um, that we hadn't considered, um, including, you know, how are they going to continue to balance whatever schedule we put out with their family obligations? And so that's still a real unknown. So we're also going to just be have to continue to advocate for staff to be flexible because um, we don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, we don't know, again, like you said, if we, if we are in, in and out of buildings, then, then that flexibility is going to need to be there. And then, you know, really, we have a, a work group um, that's called recovery planning. And one of the recovery planning um, objectives that people have pointed out is, you know, assess what you had to do to recover from, from this event. And what are things that you would like to continue that you hadn't considered before? So there are some ways of doing business found that we found that we hadn't considered that regardless if we go back to school or not, we're most likely going to want to continue doing because we found that it has been effective and hadn't tried out, but we were forced to try. And so I think there are some positive nuggets that we can pull out from that and, um, you know, work into our everyday um, operation. All right. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Bob. So this has been another edition of five minutes on K-12 online learning with, and today our with has been Bob Cole. Thank you so much.